Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. This video is made possible by the very kind donations of viewers like you. Thank you. If you are in a position to help this channel improve quality and grow, please visit my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Ages ago, in a land now long forgotten, evil ruled. The people cower in their hovels, fearful that they will be taken, forced to walk the long, winding road to the place of dread, a foreboding fortress where they would be locked away in its dungeon. There they would suffer until their deaths, or perhaps attempt to escape the dark castle. The local tailor and the church abbot await their fate. Locked away in the dungeon, it has been ages since they have even seen the sun. After years of incarceration in the depths of the dark castle, they finally break free of their cells. In a small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Inside they find two bottles of liquid luck, a potion that can give its drinker a chance to change fate. Each grabbing a bottle, they cannot linger they hear footsteps approaching. They slip away and disappear into the darkness. Down a dark corridor, a glint of metal catches the tailor's eye. A skeletal form lies slumped in the corner of a dark chamber. Beneath the dust of ages, it still clutches a moldering map. The abbot reaches down and carefully removes the map from the dead man's hands saying a prayer to placate the lost soul. The map leads the pair to a small hidden cache. Rummaging through the mostly empty shelves, they find another bottle of liquid luck and a bottle of evanescent evasion, which allows its drinker to escape danger. They continue into the darkness, coming across a crypt. The abbot wipes dust from the lid of a large tomb, hoping to read its inscription. At his touch, the lid slides open, and the remains of a giant knight rises, bellowing that they should not have disturbed him. The abbot and Taylor both recite a prayer, weakening the monster, but he hacks out with his sword, slashing the abbot's chest. The tailor continues praying, but the words seem to have no more effect on the undead giant knight. The abbot manages to block the monster's next attack. Switching tactics, the tailor throws some of the loose rocks at the knight, damaging its ancient bones, while the abbot punches out, but its armor easily absorbs the blow. Seeing the sword flash, the abbot drinks the evasion potion, its supernatural force pulling him away from what otherwise would have been a damaging blow. The abbot throws up his guard, but the tailor pulls on an old rope, causing the rotten beam above the knight to fall, crushing him. Inside the tomb, they find a flask, somehow still full after untold years. Inside is a cunning concoction, allowing its drinker a moment of insight. Leaving the crypt behind, the pair continue into the darkness. Seeing light ahead, the two hurry into a candlelit chamber. They interrupt a sacrificial ceremony. A robed man in a death mask declares they must now be sacrificed. As if to draw directly from a childhood nightmare, the tailor is half frozen with fear as the robed man approaches. Again, the tailor recites her mother's prayers, weakening the robed man, 
while the abbot lands a hard blow injuring him. The robe man's dagger flashes out, landing cuts on both the tailor and the abbot. The pair work together, splitting the robe man's attention. In unison, they move in from both sides, attacking, pummeling the profane figure within until it stops moving. Their leader defeated, the other cult members flee, leaving an elixir of insight behind. This magical potion will allow its drinker a powerful yet brief surge in a manner of their choice. The tailor discards her bottle of liquid luck, taking up the elixir instead. Not long after leaving the chamber, a haggard old woman appears out of nowhere and offers to read their fortunes. Something in her eyes speak of a greater power. They feel it would be wise to comply. The abbot walks forward, the old woman looking deep into his eyes. She speaks of a god's power, and the abbot answers with his deity's holy name. He feels empowered, a small wound closing, and the old woman trades him his bottle of liquid luck for another bottle, an elixir of insight. The tailor is next, the old woman offering the tailor a bottle of liquid luck, urging her to take it, despite having her hands already full. The tailor gently declines, telling the old woman it is better to hold on to what is hers than to take more than what she can carry. The old woman smiles a crooked tooth grin, speaking of a warm family waiting, giving the tailor strength and hope before vanishing back into the darkness. Continuing upward, the aroma of hot food leads the pair to the castle's kitchens. On a table near the door is a steaming meat pie. The pair's mouths water, living off prisoners' gruel, has famished them both. But something seems wrong. Reluctantly, the two escape back into the darkness, just as the cook a brute of a man returns, cleaver in hand, and returns to chopping a slab of raw meat, perhaps from a very human source. From salivating at the smell of meat pie, the two soon find themselves gagging. They are forced to pass through a chamber which serves as a cesspit below the castle privies. As the abbot picks his way through the filth, something unusual catches his eye. Cringing, he reaches down and retrieves a cracked great axe. How the weapon slipped down the privy remains a mystery, but the abbot drops both his bottles in exchange for the powerful weapon. They continue on. They continue through the dark corridor. At the end of a winding passage, a wooden chest covered in cobwebs is protected by a gauntlet of vicious-looking traps. The tailor tries to pick through the bear traps. Unsure of herself, she drinks the liquid luck and races through the gauntlet. The supernatural potion guides her steps to the treasure chest where she finds an infested cheese wheel. The two pick off the worst of the filth and eat the cheese, strengthening them. Inside the chest, the tailor finds a scroll containing healing verses, a magical item that grants healing power to those that achieve great feats. The two turn back, continuing their journey into the darkness. They continue as they hear odd sounds ahead. A series of long blades swing from the ceiling of this narrow passageway. They study the pattern of their movement and prepare to dash through to the other side. The pair carefully move, stepping forward as the massive blade swings between them. Step and wait. Step and wait as death cuts the air. Somehow they manage to reach the other side without having a crescent blade taste their flesh. They do not make it far before, without warning, a swarm of giant bats bursts into the passageway. The two can only cover beneath the overwhelming blur of wing and fang. 
The tailor screams as the bats fly overhead, but is small enough that none harm her. The abbot presses himself against the passage wall, trying to shield himself with the head of his axe. Most of the bats fly by, but one rakes his claws against the holy man's face, cutting as the swarm flies into the darkness. An eerie silence returns. The two continue into the dark passageway. Then, with a piercing wail, a hideous creature emerges from the darkness ahead. It drools at the sight of them. They allow the creature to charge into them, surrounding and attacking it. The tailor tries to distract the beast as the abbot fights with his axe while reciting holy words. The prayers seem to weaken the creature, but it lashes out. The abbot blocks, but claws find the tailor, injuring her. Again, the two try to trick the monster, but the holy words no longer seem to affect it, and it will not be dissuaded. It lashes out again, the abbot's axe blocking its claws, but the tailor has no such defense, again being slashed. The tailor cries out to her god with all her heart. The deity hears, the healing verses restoring strength to her. The abbot swings out with the axe, this time connecting. The monster's horn head clatters to the stone floor. The two continue onward. After a time, a drunken guard steps out and stops the pair and demands to know their business. He is unsteady on his feet and his breath is vile. The tailor thinks quickly, acting as a servant, she informs him she is bringing more drinks. She hands him her bottle of elixir of insight, which he mistakes for more of his vile-smelling brew. He takes the bottle greedily and stumbles back towards his original destination. The two continue upward, reaching level ground at last. The smell of manure is thick as they enter this chamber flanked by wooden animal stalls. An agitated beast of burden has broken free of its pen and now blocks their way. It is cornered, mighty horns ready to gorge anyone who gets close. The tailor swings out, striking the beast as the abbot prays to his god for victory. The beast lashes out, kicking the tailor, sending her down into a nearby wall. The abbot manages to block its horn with his axe. The tailor stands again, praying the healing versus closing some of her wounds. The abbot responds, bringing the axe down with all of his might, but misses. The enraged beast, whose horns leaves a gash in his arm. The beast stamps its hooves and lowers its head to charge. The pair back up, waiting until the last second to dive out of the way. The maddened animal charging full speed into the stone wall. Its weakened skull cannot withstand the impact. It cracks, and the creature falls. The two breathe a sigh of relief, just as a powerful spell is completed. The abbot's spirit is suddenly wrenched from his body. Paralyzed, the abbot can only watch as part of his soul drifts above him. The tailor unaware what is going on, shakes the abbot, trying to wake him. She then slaps him, not knowing what else to do. Screaming, she continues to shake the priest. Finally, he breaks free of the evil spell, but not before part of his soul has moved on, never to return. The two leave the castle manger, staring up at the night sky for the first time in many years. They move quickly to open a door and enter a poorly kept ladies' room. As they pass an ornate mirror in this bedchamber, twisted versions of themselves pass through it with murderous intent. Their dark doppelgangers charge, and the pair become separated, each fighting their own dark reflection. The tailor prays again, the healing verses closing some of her wounds, while the holy words stagger her evil shadow. The abbot swings out with his axe, but his dark double is ready, replying with a powerful axe blow of his own. The abbot prays for strength, his holy words seeming to weaken his evil double. 
the pair again worked together, baiting their evil doubles. As the two twins raced to finish them, they pulled down the mirror, shattering it and their opponents on the stone floor. In the room, they find a bottle containing an evasion potion. The two find their way to an ornate door. Their memories flash back to the day they were forced into this wretched place. This door, they remember. On the other side is a great hall, and beyond it, freedom. They move forward. Beside the door, a man sits at a table, his face shrouded in shadow. As the abbot edges past, he lurches and pulls him close with a snarl revealing his scarred face and rancid intentions. The abbot pulls away, but not before the guard captain buries his knife in the side of the abbot. The two stumble through the heavy, ornate door, readying themselves for a race from the knife-wielding captain and freedom. The man does not follow. The great hall is not empty as it was when they were dragged here. Standing in the center of the room, protected by her followers, is a woman, once a great priestess, a woman known for her exceptional beauty, or rather, what is left of her. Now what remains is a gaunt and corrupted fiend. The demented priestess's voice echoes off the walls. You cannot harm me. Behold the devotion of my followers. Her followers charge forward as she holds back, casting dark magic. The tailor slams one of the cultists to the ground as the abbot's axe cleaves another. The tailor drinks her potion, which protects her from the tendril of dark energy reaching up from the floor. The abbot's axe provides no protection as the dark energy rips him off his feet, leaving him out of breath and on his knees. The tailor struggles against the remaining cultists, but is unable to avoid the evil tendrils now focused on her. She lands a blow on the cultists, sending him to the floor as the abbot manages to stand, charging, landing a blow with his axe on the priestess. He steps back as the tailor moves in, but the priestess is not fooled. The ever-solidifying darkness smashes the tailor aside. They move in, the tailor drawing the priestess's attention as the abbot puts all of his strength into his axe swing. The powerful blow strikes, and the weapon shatters. The priestess's infernal spell is complete, and the... the... thing is here. The demon stands over the pair. It's unworldly, unholy body never meant to be in the human world. It laughs like the echoed screams of a legion damned. The abbot and Taylor's minds shatter into madness just before the demon breaks what is left of their bodies. Hello. This is Adam with Dream Made Productions. Thank you for watching my content. It really means a lot that you have given me the chance to entertain you. If you would like to support the channel, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Also below is a link for PayPal, or links if you would like to send crypto, if that's more your thing. Please know any amount that you give will be cherished and used to upgrade equipment and improve the channel. You can also help the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, commenting, and sharing my channel with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come.